Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Hey guys, so I'm bringing you another tutorial. This time it's going to be a Terran. This is a Terran vs. Protoss strategy that basically is the de facto currently as far as Terran vs. Protoss goes. So what are we looking at today? We're looking at me practicing my F1 split, of course, which I will do one more time for you guys. A little bit slow. I'm usually a lot better at my F1 split than this, but... Anyways, and also I didn't send them to the right mineral patches. Usually you should look where your first F1 is and then send them in that order. But anyways, here we go. This is the actual starting of it. So what are we going to be doing? We're going to be constantly building workers and supply, obviously, but this is two racks fast expand. And as I said, this is a de facto against Protoss. It allows you to get enough units to survive any sort of four warp gate, as well as giving you enough units to also do some early aggression if you choose to. And it gets that very, very important fast expansion, which once you start getting into the gold level or higher, this is definitely a build order you want to be looking into. At lower levels, you might have trouble with this build. So anyways, very, very standard so far. 10 for our supply depot coming down right there. Bam! That's a supply depot. Hell yeah. Putting it right there, baby. Just going to make a little bit of an artificial wall off here. You don't always have to do stuff like that, especially against Protoss, but usually against Protoss, you will not wall in your front ramp is sort of the main thing here. Anyways, as you notice, constant, constant point. SCV production other than being supply block for half a second, which does not matter. And 12 supply, we're putting down our racks. This is pretty standard. Uh, I've seen some builds where people do 13 racks, which is slightly more economical, but we're not talking about those. So this build was used by select very, very high level grandmasters, top of the world type player. Uh, again, it's been a few tournaments. We can see us, our refinery coming down at 13 supply that was end of 13 so and one thing I want to notice is when this barracks is yeah see that about two-thirds done send out a SCV scout so that's when we send out our scout with this build and we start scouting around you can send it a little bit earlier if you really want but it will hurt your economy just a tiny bit notice the gas transfer happening right away and look at this the timing the barracks finishes that SCV was just finished we get down our orbital command all really really standard up to this point this is a very standard uh, Terran opening that's very open to a lot of different things is this, you know, 12, 13, 15. And here we can see at 16 supply comes down our other, of course, building one Marine. 16 supply is when we bring down the second racks, and then as soon as that Marine's done, we throw on that tech lab, and we just, as soon as this is done, we just resume Complete. normal Complete. SCV production. Workers, workers, and supply, workers, and supply. And of course, 17 supply up here. You'll notice building a supply depot. So 17 comes down your next supply. Uh, mine, anyways. And we're going to be getting a Reaper right away. This is more advanced level. Uh, we're getting this Reaper for scouting and maybe do a little bit of a RAS. So definitely Reapers can still be quite fun. And we're getting concussive shells right away if you notice. Uh, concussive shells very, very important against Protoss. Uh, really makes kiting a lot easier, especially when they have stalkers means they can't cut you back and as soon as this barracks finishes we're putting down a reactor core on it so there we go uh, we've got some pretty <clears throat> pretty standard stuff we're continuing production we've got a marauder now and look at this bunker in the front i'd also like to say throw down a supply depot right now my supply depot was a tiny bit late uh, definitely throw that down just a little bit earlier at the same time as your bunker so definitely we're throwing down that bunker uh, never hurts, but especially if you've scouted a 4-gate, you throw down one or two bunkers at your main and that basically shuts down a 4-gate completely. As we can see, continuous worker production, uh, building, see a little bit supply block there because I didn't build that second supply depot early enough. And that's the other reason why I built a marine instead of marauder out of this barracks, is because I knew I was going to get supply block. So I was like, yeah. Anyways, there we go. Now have enough supply and this is your... Well, oh, not quite. Okay, 29 supply is when your command center goes down. I think I pulled, yeah, I pulled two workers offline. Oops. Uh, this one can stay here on auto repair, considering you will have some extra workers by now. If we look at that income tab, oh, we should be fully saturated. But we're oversaturated considering we don't have our next gas. So there you guys go. That is the two racks fast expand build. And we're using a bunker in the front for defense, using a reaper for that valuable scouting information and possibly a bit of harass. So the key thing here is you're only getting one gas uh, so that you can get some marauders and get your add-ons and then you're getting your very very standard timing for all these first three things. 
for your or four actually your supply depot your barracks your refinery your orbital command and then 16 comes down your extra your next barracks you get your tech lab get your reaper get your supply at 17 throw down a bunker at some point get your next supply at about 22 would be a good place to get it and of course constant SCV production and 29 supply for your command center and the reason why it's 29 supply for the command center is basically t this 29 supply allows you to not cut building SCVs or units so 29 supply allows you to continually produce units as well as workers and also because we don't have that second gas yet so once you finish this you put this basically you want to place your command center inside of your base and usually in such a way that it's closest to being able to fly over here uh, but of course this map I do not have enough room in this base to do that I would not be able to or of course another thing to think about is some people make sure it's far enough away from their ramp that units can't get vision when they poke up your ramp so they can't actually see that you're expanding. Some players will really do that, keep it tricky, but you don't want to do that if it makes it really, really far for your command center to fly over to your natural. After you've finished your two racks expo, basically you hold off whatever aggression the Protoss player is going to throw at you, or if they're not going to be aggressive, you can go and be the aggressor. You have your expansion fly over, you start, uh, you transfer some of your workers because you will have extras, you get your other gas, and then you just go on with whatever play you want, either getting more barracks or getting your tech into factory, starports, so on. I would usually suggest getting a third barracks once this base is, uh, once your command center is almost done. And a lot of people will morph it into an orbital command so that it builds up energy as it's flying over. The only downside to this is you do lose that little bit of mining time. So, but so far the pros they continually choose to morph it into an orbital command so for now I will assume that actually is a little bit better than just flying it over right away and then making it an orbital command once it lands. Okay guys hope you like that hopefully for you Terran players who are having trouble with Protoss uh, definitely give this build a whirl this is really much the de facto build against Protoss.